Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara and today we are doing another pick a card reading and this time we are focusing in on what you need to know about this connection. We're gonna ignore the struggle braids today, okay? It's hair wash day, I didn't get around to it, mind your business. Anyways, I need you to think of the person that you are asking about. I really felt like we needed to do this reading at this time with eclipse season, with mercury retrograde, Everyone in my life has been asking me to do readings about certain relationships, exes, partners, whoever. Like we're just on the struggle bus when it comes to love, it seems. <laughs> or someone in your life, you know, it doesn't have to be romantic. I will say that a lot of the messages that will come through in today's reading have to do with past, present, or future romantic connection, right? So you're gonna have to filter that out if you're asking about a friend, a coworker, or someone like that. But Picture in your mind the person that you want to ask about now and let's get into the groups. Okay, once you have your person in mind, you can take a look at all three groups that are on the screen. Whichever one of these celestial sky beings you feel most drawn to, that will be your group. We have group number one with the sun, group number two with the moon, and group number three with the cloud. Can I just say that it's a little weird that they put the moon in front of a cloud? That just doesn't happen, but yeah. Anyways, whichever one you feel most drawn to, I guess, uh, that will be your reading. Don't overthink it. Just go with your intuition, and once you're ready, you can either watch through or skip ahead to your reading using the timestamps. Let's begin. Okay, group number one. Let's see what you need to know about this connection. We're gonna do four sections to this reading. First, we're gonna start off with an energy check, looking at your person, you, and just kind of where you're at right now. Then we will dive into the tarot to get the full story of what's happening. Then we'll get some channeled messages from your person to you, maybe from you to your person, we'll see. And then we will finish off by getting the advice that you need, okay? So diving into it. First card is gonna take a look at the overall energy of just where you're at in this connection. And it, this part of the reading is really important because this energy check will let you know if you selected the right group or not. So if none of this resonates at all, maybe you should go back and select a different group or there just might not be any messages for you today. Remember that this is a general reading. Take it if it resonates. If it doesn't resonate, it's not meant for you, okay? So generally where you're at with this person is the star reversed. I am seeing disrespect or a lack of appreciation, you know? This is like a situation where you or your other person might be feeling like your standards for this connection has not been met or you feel underappreciated and, or maybe even just that you can do better, honestly. Like, that's what I'm getting with the star card in reverse, but it's just straight up, straight up. All right, whew, this is gonna be a fun one. Okay, so there's gonna be person A and person B. I don't know which one's which. You're gonna have to listen to your intuition. So if person A sounds like you and person B sounds like your person, go with it, okay? If you kind of feel both of your energies in both piles, that's fine too. That can just show that you're mirroring each other very heavily at this time, which is quite common in um, kind of like soulmate connections or even just connections where you spend a lot of, a lot of time with uh, each other. So person A is being represented by the crocodile. Okay, this could be water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Doesn't have to be though. And this is someone who was playing the waiting game, the patient game, uh, the long game. <laughs> we'll get more info on that. Person B is being represented by the vulture in reversed. I don't know why this gives me strong Scorpio energy, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, but technically this is air. So Gemini, Aquarius, Libra. And it's interesting. I actually just saw Vulture the other day in a cemetery. It was very stereotypical. Huge, huge. They're, they're very creepy looking. <laughs> uh, that has nothing to do with this reading. You, <laughs> this person kind of with this card in reversed is giving me like wanting to get the most of this situation without actually doing the work. Okay, I oh, this is gonna be a tough reading, y'all. This is gonna be a tough reading. So I am thinking of vultures, right? And most of the time they kind of just fly to wherever there's a dead animal around to eat. You know, they're vultures, they, they eat what is dead. But oftentimes they don't actually kill 
the animal themselves. They just go to it after it's been killed or after it died. So what that gives me about person B is that they may be the type of person who wanted to not have to do any of the emotional labor in this connection. And they may have wanted the benefits of having a relationship without really doing that work with this card in reverse. There are positive light attributes to the vulture. I'm not crapping on the vulture as a spirit animal. Okay, every animal has their spiritual medicine. But with this reading, I said to myself as I was shuffling the cards, if any of the animal spirits come out in reverse, I'm gonna read it in reverse because usually I would just read them upright. And with person B, it's in reversed. And I, I just feel like, you know, they weren't really um, willing to really do the work here. And person A being the crocodile, it seems like they were doing a lot of waiting 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 like trying to let person b know what they need from a relationship what they need from a connection waiting just trying to see what happens crocodiles medicine is, is about patience it's about waiting for the right moments for going after what you want and i just feel like person a was was stuck waiting you know so also, what I'm seeing here is two predators, all right? A animals, the animals, not you. <laughs> and crocodile upright, they're actually gonna do the work. They're actually going to get what they want and like put the work in, be patient, work with this connection. Vulture in reversed, no, they're not doing the work. They just want the benefits. So that's where we're at. So focusing back on the cro crocodile, the crocodile. Um, I feel like many of you guys are the crocodile, I'm just, getting that vibe i mean if you can sit here and watch this video and you acknowledge that you are this vulture person then i commend you because it, it takes a certain type of character to admit where you might go wrong in a connection so i love that i'm um, not saying that the crocodile is perfect we'll get into into everything all right so this is from the chakra wisdom and for the crocodile two cards actually popped out i was only looking for one but they have gossip with the heart chakra and perseverance with the sacral chakra, okay? Perseverance, patience, you know, these are words that I don't necessarily like hearing in love readings because when it comes to a connection, like sure you should be pace, patient, sure you should persevere, but like this is giving me like persevering through so much difficulty. Like if we look at this, this is someone who has to shed this old raggedy cloak this old lifestyle that they were living and look they're like looking down on themselves they're so glamorous they're so beautiful but like they don't see that in themselves and they have a spirit guide here helping them let go of of this you know it can be damaging to your self-esteem when you stay in a connection and you're the only one giving in that connection it could really hurt your self-esteem because essentially you'll be sitting here questioning like why doesn't this person want to put as much into this that I want to put into it? Why doesn't this person want to show up in the way that I'm showing up here? So, <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> and then we have the gossip card here as well. So like I said, crocodile's not perfect. Um, I almost feel like this connection or the crocodile in this connection may have been in a pattern of complaining or in a pattern of, um, I don't wanna say seeking out drama, but kind of using the problems of this connection to distract themselves from what really needed to be focused on in their life. So say for example, they're really stressed out with their job. Uh, for them, it's it was almost like easier to kind of focus on trying to fix this relationship than it was to fixing their own life, their own job, their own career. So I, I just feel like their energies were kind of focused on the wrong things here. Now, the chakra wisdom for the vulture person is facade mm -hmm. with the solar plexus chakra. Facade. It was all a facade. Whew. I wonder. I wonder. I'll just leave it at that. We need more information here. I honestly feel like this will make more sense when we start pulling the tarot. So our final energy oracle cards to represent both parties here. Um, the crocodile person has a woman holding a coin upright. This is a great, great card for them. 
And I, I almost wonder if this is someone you recently broken up with. Like you're the crocodile and you recently broken up with the vulture. Whoever the crocodile person is, they're thriving now. Okay, they are thriving now. We see here a woman focusing on, oh, it doesn't have to be a woman. Okay, in the picture, we see a woman. You don't have to be a woman. They don't have to be a woman. Like gender does not exist on this channel. Okay, <laughs> who is focusing on their coin, focusing on their wellness and their friends. We see here a little black cat, which is so funny because my black cat's right there. And you know, this is just kind of like knowing your worth. The crocodile person is starting this journey of knowing their worth and standing by their standards, you know, no longer pouring so much energy and waiting for the vulture person to change. It, it's a journey. This whole relationship was a journey um, that has been teaching the crocodile person all about standing by themselves, standing up for themselves, standing by their standards. And I, I feel like they really are thriving and glowing now. And I'm almost curious if it was a situation where they got out of this relationship and now they're like actually able to focus on the problems that were existing in their life that they were kind of distracting themselves from with this relationship that constantly demanded their attention and trying to fix it, trying to save it, etc. Now that that's gone, I wonder if the crocodile person is really thriving and glowing because it's like now they have so much time and energy to pour into themselves. The energy of the vulture person <laughs> in reverse, of course, is the angel of love in reverse. Hoo-wee, ooh-wee. <laughs> there are two messages here with this card and it will depend on what situation you're in, okay? So if you're still with this person, like I, I really do feel like almost 100% of you guys watching are the crocodile. If you're still with the vulture, this card is saying that they do not love you as much as you love them. And that is a cold hard fact that you need to swallow right now. It may hurt, it may sting, but the fact of the matter is love is an action. Love is a verb. Love is something that you do and you know, in terms of emotion, in terms of enjoying your presence, sure, I guess you could say they do love you. However, in terms of like actually loving as a verb, as something you do, this person is not meeting you where you're at. They they just aren't simple. You know, I, I don't want to make it hurt in the wrong way. Like, I'm not trying to say that they don't like you, that they don't value you, that they don't emotionally have feelings for you because they do okay they really do this card wouldn't come out if they didn't have feelings for you but in terms of treating you the way you deserve to be treated and loving you the way that you deserve to be loved they're not doing it now the other group of people here is if you're already separated from the vulture if you're already like you called it quits you broke up which i do feel like the majority of you might be in that boat this card is showing that this person still has feelings for you, that they still long for you and they're finding it really difficult to move on. Now, I'm not someone who likes doing readings for those in separation, but it is required sometimes, you know, to get some clarity on the relationship so we can move on to bigger and better things. And, you know, because there's so many tarot readers out there, psychics who really profit and gain so many followers and subscribers off of feeding this message of, you know, your ex still misses you, you know, you're gonna come back together. And I don't think that's really right. <laughs> I don't think it's, um, they profit off of get, getting people to stay in this state of limerence, you know, holding out hope for something to happen. And I'm, I'm just reading the cards exactly how they're playing out. You know, I just wanna reassure you, I'm not one of those people. I'm gonna spit the truth to you and what I see from spirits, even if it stings. And if you are separated from this person, they do still have feelings for you. Now that does not mean you should get back together with them. So let's not jump ahead of ourselves. If you are still with this person, this is your confirmation of spirit saying, the angel of love saying to you, the amount that you love as a verb, the amount that you give in connections is not equal to what this person's giving. They don't love you as much as you love them. It's unrequited. So let that be what it may be. And if it resonates, it resonates. You know, if it doesn't and you're really hurt and you're like, oh my gosh, I thought they did love me. And like, you know, they do all these kind of things for me. Don't force it to fit if it doesn't resonate, okay? Moving on to the second portion of your reading, the tarot. We're just gonna make space 
for anything to come through that needs to come through about this connection. So we're calling out to your spirit guides, spirit, the universe, the higher spirit of you and this person of this connection. Like we're just gonna pull some cards and get a story here. Whatever you, needs to come through will come through. So let's see. Let's see. Yeah, and I'm just pulling them face down. I don't know how many I wanna pull. We're just gonna do this very intuitively. I'm making two rows. And I'll keep it at that. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. Eight. Oh, how about that? On the bottom of the deck, we have the Ace of Cups too. This is the um, Heaven and Earth Tarot. I forgot the name of it for a second. I don't know why I felt guided to use this deck today, but so be it. We have the Hierophant. I feel like this is a painful situation for you guys because there does seem to be love still here. And with the Hierophant, I, I'm almost wondering if you guys like literally were planning on being married, on having this really long-term thing, moving in together, having a family together, or maybe you even did those things with this person or are in that situation with this person. You know, we see this with the white dove. It is a symbol of monogamy or longevity. Um, and we see like two keys there crossed at the bottom, two people coming before the universe, coming before a spiritual leader or figure and making a promise, a vow to each other. So it is a card of uh, marriage. So that can make the situation extra difficult if you had that in your heart, in your mind or your reality with this person. Um, it could be something you need to work through. Also, what I wanna say here with the Hierophant, if you are wanting to make it work with this person, I just, I feel guided to say you almost need to have a relationship therapist because the energy that I'm getting from this, it's gonna be so unbelievably difficult to continue having a connection with each other without kind of this third party mediator. And I, we're seeing that here in this reading, okay? Third party mediator, someone who's emotionally intelligent, who's outside of both of you. So not a friend, not someone you know, like someone who's a stranger with really high emotional intelligence who can tell you and help you guys work through conflict in this connection if you wanna make it work. I almost feel like it's at that level where it's beyond you, okay? It's beyond you. It's not your job to constantly be waiting, constantly be pointing out um, what you need in this connection, constantly needing to ask this person to reassure you and make you feel valued. Like it's, it, that's something you shouldn't be doing. So if you want to make this work, your person has to be willing to get help on their own. It's at that level. I, I truly believe it's at that level. And if they don't want that, you can't force that on them. You can't keep waiting and saying, well, oh, if only they got therapy, we would be perfect. So I'll just wait for that to happen. Like, no, they need to do it right now if you want this to work. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Mm. Okay, second card out. We have the two of swords, peace. Peace, protecting your heart, protecting your space. I feel group number one, that you are in a really healthy place. Um, in terms of emotion, emotionally, like how you're reacting to this situation. I feel like you're in a place where you are now protecting your heart and you don't want to dive back into something with this person or even keep going with this person if it's continuously hurting you. The, the Two of Swords, you know, it, it gets a bad rap as being like a card of stagnation. I'm not reading this as stagnation. I am reading this as healthy boundaries, you know, crossing my heart. I am protecting myself. This is abiding by your standards. And that's what creates peace. You know, if you if you can't respect me, if you can't be authentic and honestly communicate with me, then I'm not gonna have you in my life. Now, the only way I'm going to invite you back in my life or keep moving forward with you is if you genuinely pleasantly surprise me with how much you grow, how much you help yourself and work on this on your own. It's not up to me anymore. So it's like, I'm not doing anything anymore. See how she's sitting down? I just feel like you're done. You're not, you're done trying with this person. It's like, if you want things to change with us, if you still have those feelings, you're still holding out hope for this connection with you and I, you need to do some work because you made me feel like so unloved, so, like I was doing everything. So it's it's just, it's in their court now, it falls in their court. Five of swords, exactly. I, I really do feel like most of you have walked away from this person by this point, or you are going to walk away from this person. It's not worth it, you know, it's not worth it. Because I, I feel like with this card, 
every time you have tried to bring up this issue in the past, they have gotten defensive. You know, they've gotten defensive and they wanted to win the argument for their ego's sake. And that's the thing about arguing. No one wins when you're arguing. No one wins. Because when you have someone who's just there to defend themselves and they're not trying to view things from an empathetic point of view, they just want, you know, their side of things to be correct. Sure, they'll win the argument, but really they're the loser. Because now these people that they're arguing with, they don't want to talk anymore. They don't want to argue anymore. They're done. You know, arguing, no bueno. All right. Arguing is so dumb. I am in a super healthy relationship right now. And I can tell you this, we have never argued once. <laughs> we don't argue, oh, there was a bird at my window. <laughs> we have discussions. We discuss things like adults. When it's like a back and forth bickering, that is never healthy. And it has become so normalized for so many people. But I think you, group number one, have a high emotional intelligence and you knew like arguing, mm -mm, not doing it. And Five of Swords is definitely a card of walking away defeated, honestly. Like, you're defeated. I can't win an argument with you. You're right. So I'm done arguing. Have fun on your own, I guess, you know? Like, because I'm protecting my peace. You cannot take my peace from me. Mm. Fourth card out, we have the Knight of Wands. Okay, I feel like you did a power move with that. When you stand up for your standards and you do not lower your standards for someone else, you become extremely attractive. You know, I, I just feel like... Sometimes if you get into these situations where you're you're overly patient with someone who is constantly just trying to get the most out of you without doing any work, it actually makes you look more desperate. It makes you and look, we see this here. Very depicted very aptly. When you were doing that, you were wearing this old raggedy cloak, you know, energetically I'm just gonna be honest, energetically you were unattractive when you were lowering your standards to be with this person and waiting for them, waiting on them, telling them like every second of the day, like what you need from them. It's, it's like this situation, you know, say you're married, you live with someone and every single day you ask them to please do your dishes. Like, please do your dishes, please do your dishes. And they keep saying like, oh yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And you sit them down and you have a serious conversation. Like I'm not your mother, I'm not your father. And it, pains me to sit here and have to ask you this every single day. It feels disrespectful to me and the home and I need you to change this. Like you have that conversation where you put, you lay it down. You put your dick on the table. You lay it down. I just spat all over the camera. I'm so sorry. You lay it down and they still won't do the dishes. And now you're just sitting there like dealing with it. Like that lowers your value energetically. When that happens, when they overstep boundaries like that, you gotta let them go. You gotta let them go. Like I already told you my boundary. My boundary is if I want to live with someone, if I wanna be with someone, they have to have basic hygiene and, <laughs> and respect for the other people in the house. And you have demonstrated that you will not work with me in that regard. Like honestly, and you know what's so funny in those situations, I swear to God, like you break up with that person over that and then they'll make you out to be the crazy person. Like they broke up with me because of dishes. And it's like, yeah, I sure did. And I'll do it again. If you want to act like that, mm, mm. So anyways, you became a lot more attractive or will become a lot more attractive when you stand up for yourself like this. But hold on, where I was getting with that is like, you were wearing this cloak, you were energetically unattractive, but now look at you, you're glowing, you're stunning, you're beautiful. And your spirit guides are working with you to kind of like allow you to see yourself as this beautiful person once more, because um, there was real damage done to your self-esteem with this, you know, when you're constantly dealing with someone who like just straight up either doesn't respect you or doesn't put as much energy into the relationship as you do, unrequited love, mm, that's painful, it's painful. Fifth card out, we have the Seven of Cups reversed, right? Illusionary success. And I, I think that's really funny. That phrase, you know, this is a deck where it actually like has these little phrases, illusionary success. I, I almost feel, and it, you know, it's funny on the table. I wish I could show you. <laughs> I wish I could have two camera angles. It bothers me so much. Um, this illusionary success came out right above the facade card, like literally right on top of it on my table facade illusionary success the success of this relationship feels like a facade it, it feels like you were almost lying to yourself about how healthy this connection was it feels like you were wearing rose-colored glasses 
and problems were being ignored. I am, well, actually this facade card came out for the vulture person. So whoever the vulture person is, which is most likely your other person that you're asking about, I almost feel like they were pretending like everything was fine and that they didn't have to do any work. You know, they were wearing rose colored glasses to look in the mirror. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> I don't know why that just did something for me. They were wearing rose colored glasses when they'd look at themselves in the mirror, when they would look at their own behavior in this connection. And it was constantly like, I'm a great partner. I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm wonderful. And it's like, you really aren't, you're doing the bare minimum. Oh, mm. so that's in reversed. Um, I do wonder if they still feel that way, but we have three more cards, let's see. We have victory with the six of wands. Yeah, victory after defeat. Literally, <laughs> literally. Five of swords, six of wands. We have defeat, we have victory. <laughs> I just feel like your self-esteem, your confidence is growing rapidly. And it just seems like everything's falling into place after letting the situation go. We have the seven of swords. I knew this card was gonna come out. Unstable effort. This is just showing you what it is, guys, especially for those of you still in this connection. Unstable effort. What that means, like think about the phrase unstable effort. This could be someone who you, you display a problem to them, like, hey, I really need this to change in our connection in order for me to feel safe and loved. And then, okay, fine, whatever. They'll, they'll put the energy in to do whatever you ask them to do for like maybe a week, maybe two. And then they go right back to what they were doing. And it, it, it gives this illusion that they're growing, but really they're not changing at all. You know, they just change for like the time being so that you're satisfied, you, you drop the argument and then they go back to their original ways, their lazy ways of relating. So, and again, this is really depicting someone who, who is really wanting to get more from a connection than they're giving. See, they're taking five swords, but they're only leaving two for you. So I, hmm. and you know what you're doing? You're taking those two swords to protect yourself, protect your peace. Like, okay, I'll take these two swords to keep weirdos like you away from me. Mm, 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 mm. Final tarot card out is the four of swords in reversed. And it says rest from strife. Exactly. I just feel like you were done arguing, done arguing, you know, or, or you are at your last draw with arguing. It's, it just really feels like you, you need a break. You need a break. And we see here very clearly um, in the stained glass, there is a spirit guide healing, healing you. And I feel like this separation with this person is healing you both. But you, I really need to emphasize the need for the separation, okay? It's in reverse, which means you're gonna try resisting it, but you need it, okay? Especially if you just broke up with this person. Go no contact for at least a month, at least a month, okay? Like give yourself a rest from each other. And that is what's gonna help you. And from dating in general, that's what's gonna help you grow from the situation and have a clear mind thinking about it. And I almost feel like your person, the vulture person here also needs no contact so they can realize where they went wrong and hopefully heal and recover from that and realize what they did wrong in this connection. Woo we okay, moving on to the next segment of this reading. We are gonna get some channeled messages from your person to you from three different decks. So first we're starting with the Hidden Truth Oracle. So anything that wants to come out, talking to their higher selves. Okay, so we're calling out to their higher selves. Um, if your in earth version of you was completely honest to group number one about their hidden or their true feelings rather what would they say if you were a person group number one was completely honest with you about their feelings and they did not hold back what would they say hidden truth oracle all right we have my life is not as together as it seems well <laughs> We didn't need a car to tell us that. We did not need a car to tell us that. I could pick that up from a mile away. Like, it really feels to me that they're struggling. Like, they are struggling without you. Um, and even just on their own. Like, they're not, they weren't able to give to this connection because they're not even ready for a connection, like at all. 
emotionally, physically, materially, they're just not there. And to be honest, group number one, I appreciate the fact that you're an empathetic person. You know, you, you give very loving, unconditionally loving vibes, but you do deserve someone who is ready for a relationship. And that's just a fact, okay? You know, you can't love someone into being a good partner for you. And you're coming to relationships ready, prepared, working on them, giving them time and energy and effort, and you deserve someone who's gonna do the same thing. So someone could be a great person, very lovely, you're super attracted to them, but if they just simply are not ready for a connection, don't go after them. I remember every detail of that day. So, <laughs> all right. For some reason, when this card came out, a very specific circumstance came to my mind. And I'm, I'm thinking, if your person said to you like something along the lines of like, oh, well, I didn't remember that or I forgot to tell you that or something about like just not remembering something that they should have told you, should have mentioned or, or something. This card is saying, I actually remember everything. Also what I'm getting from this card is I know exactly what I did. I know exactly where I went wrong. But this five of swords is giving me, but I won't admit it. So, whew. and also can we just appreciate the fact that we have the five of swords and the seven of swords. These are my two tarot cards of toxic behavior. Okay, arguing, lying, or taking way too much from a connection. And this card is kind of confirming for me, like, yeah, I know that I did wrong. So if this person's acting really defensively, which it seems like they are, um, they actually know that they're in the wrong, is what I feel. Uh, but they just won't admit it. So that is messed up, I hate that. <laughs> um, let's see, anything else from the Hidden Truth Oracle? Going once, going twice, okay, going twice, going three times. You have two cards. You speak to me through music. So when they're listening to music, uh, certain lyrics will come through that will really remind them of this connection. And probably for you too, that's called Claire Audience. And I don't react when people mention you. I feel like they're trying to keep calm and keep cool. Like, oh, it's, it's no big deal that we've broken up, but <laughs> it's a big deal to them. Okay. Moving on to my first, we're using two homemade oracles for this portion of the reading. This is the first one. It doesn't have a name, so just the first homemade oracle. You have two cards that came out. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? All right, let's see. Oh, three cards, excuse me. Um, the first one says, I have a hard time communicating my feelings and being vulnerable, exactly. Yeah, this is why they're acting defensively. They, they just are being a little wuss about like admitting where things went wrong. I am not worth the wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're saying that to you, crocodile, sitting there waiting in, in your emotional waters, waiting for them to apologize, waiting for them to change, waiting for whatever you're waiting for. You heard it first from their higher self, you know, their best version that exists in the universe. They are telling you, I am not worth the wait. How the, the version of me that you are interacting with here on earth is not worth the wait. Okay, stop waiting for them to apologize. Stop doing that. Live your best life. Live your glowing life, your victory. Look at that, be this, okay? You, you're literally stunning. I feel like you have, have glown up and grew up because of this connection. And I, it's really telling when some type of ending happens because two people are in, in disputes. The person who was in the wrong, more often than not, will be exactly the same way. The person who does the growing, the healing, the glowing up after a connection, you know that that person was not genuinely, generally in the wrong in that connection. Now, this isn't to think in black and white terms, like everyone has some things that they might've said or done that they regret. However, if you're having like a massive glow up because you left someone, I'm just saying. And then you have, I view you as family. Like I said, the love is there. They're missing on you probably, most likely. You know, they're, they're sitting here trying to pretend like they don't still have feelings for you, but like, think about it. You, are way above their league. You are way above their 
like, you had to lower your standards to be with this person. You get what I'm saying? So naturally they're gonna miss you. I would miss you too if I lost you, gosh darn. Like, they're missing out. All right, all right, moving on to the, the third deck, the second homemade deck. You might recognize this one. Um, it is my channeled love messages tarot slash oracle deck, so. <laughs> What would your person say to you if they were completely open and honest about their feelings for you? We're having quite a few cards come out. We have four, five, anything else going once, anything else going twice, anything else going thrice. Okay, five cards. We have the four of swords. I am healing and reflecting right now. We need to pause this temporarily. I should probably get therapy, LOL. <laughs> You don't say, you don't say. Like guys, like we just said, what was it? With the, I remember every detail of that day, this person acknowledges internally that they have been the problem, but they won't admit it because they have an ego, okay? They have an ego. And this is a, definitely a card that's saying, yes, the separation is needed. And we should like, if you're in no contact, stay in no contact. Stay in no contact. Let this person come to you and apologize and grovel, okay? Don't be reaching out for them. Don't be waiting on them. Literally move on with your life. If they wanna reach out in the future and they've done some serious reflecting and went to therapy and, and all this stuff, then, you know, if you wanna see what lies there, sure. But you are hearing it straight from their higher self. I am not worth the wait. I need separation. I need therapy. I need to heal. Like, I, I am not ready for to give you what you deserve that's what they're saying so taking a break needing space mentally needing time to rest recovering from the past and present stress in separation boom like i said most of you guys are in separation i see that wholeheartedly now we have the high priestess i feel our relationship in the 5d i acknowledge there is a deeper spiritual meaning to this connection yeah this makes sense with the you speak to me through music card like you did have a deep connection your feelings there weren't for nothing. And your person knows that, acknowledges it, feels it. Like they they get messages um, kind of through music about you in a very psychic way. They might even have dreams about you. You might experience telepathy with them. You might have even thought of this person as a soulmate, a twin flame, really it's a karmic situation. So keeping feelings a secret, talking to each other in daydreams. I feel like this person might develop a, a, a slight sense of limerence for you. A, a, a sense of, I really missed my chance with that person. Like you were the one that got away here. Um, thank God you did because they're not ready, you know? Uh, we also have 10 of pentacles. Let's get married, start a family and buy our dream house. Exactly. That's what that hero font card, card was saying. Like this person wanted to have these things with you. Maybe you were even planning on it, all right? But they simply did not do enough. Like, I feel like you dodged a bullet with that one. Like, if I'm being real here, they and that kills them. Like, they still, that sits in them. And that's why they have this angel in love reverse card. Like, they are heartbroken over this connection. But you know, it's their own fault, so. <laughs> we have, I like I said, I would be pretty mad at myself if I lost you to group number one. So, it's only natural. We have judgment coming out. I'm trying to make a decision about this connection. Um, a <laughs> little too late, you know, that's what this is saying to me. Uh, realizing the potential, a little too late. This relationship is about to change, addressing past issues, a spiritual awakening was triggered here, reconciliation. Let me say this, I'm not saying that reconciliation is out of the picture, group number one, but we did get that direct message from their higher self, don't wait for it, don't expect it, okay? Have zero expectations when it comes to that. And, and like I said in the beginning, beginning of your reading, like I don't do reading saying like, yeah, your ex is gonna come back for a reason. You know, don't have that expectation because it's so toxic. Go on living your life in your six of wands, in your success, in your, in your glow. You know, go on living your life as if you're never gonna talk to this person again. If they wanna reach out, they can reach out. If they wanna do the inner healing work, they can do that. But you've done enough here. Mm. So we have three of pentacles. I'm trying to impress you a little too late. Mm hmm And we have the queen of pentacles. You're so adorable. I just want to nurture you and take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would too if I were... Ah, <laughs> oh, you get the point. 
Next portion of this reading, let's get your advice. Okay, starting with the angels. Have a look at the camera timer. What is your advice to group number one about this connection? Angels, for love and light, for the greatest good of group number one and the world, what is your advice to them so that they can navigate this situation within the highest degree of all that good stuff? Okay, not the right time, exactly. This is a no, not the right time. Don't reach out, it don't, no contact guys no contact none anything else okay yeah we have recovery recovery you need time to recover remember that four of swords in reverse where to go the angels are healing you right now and look we even see that here as well there's like a little angel here here over her shoulders sending so much lights into her to heal and recover we see that here as well it, honestly, I would even recommend like healing meditations, Reiki, energy cleansing. You can do it on yourself even. Put on some meditation music and just visualize, envision the angels and yourself like healing you, sending so much light and love to your heart space, especially. Um, you need the separation. You need to recover. You need to kind of like process all of the emotions that come from this ending. Like you shouldn't even contemplate reaching back out to them until you are 100% disconnected emotionally. Like you don't, you're not emotionally invested or involved in this connection again. You know, that could take months. So I'm just saying no contact seems to be the move here. Perfect timing. Things will work out on their own when they will. Okay, don't worry. It's up to you. I just really think you shouldn't reach out. <laughs> Personal opinion, you shouldn't be the one reaching out here. Okay, give it time. Give it time. All right, this is from a deck I don't use that often, the Rebel deck. It is an oracle. It's like a fun party oracle. <laughs> Let's just see what comes out. What is your advice for love and light for the highest path in this situation that you're in with this person or just in general, you know, what's your advice? Any card can come out, y'all, okay. The card that came out, look at that. Stop obsessing. Are y'all in limerence with this person? Are y'all in limerence with this person? Like, I wouldn't, honestly, don't be hard on yourself if you are. It makes sense to kind of get into this pattern of wanting to chase someone who is giving us the bare minimum. It is, it can become addicting, honestly, trying to get someone to love you and give you attention. It becomes like this weird pattern of like dopamine release in your brain where like every time they finally give you attention or finally text you or finally do this, like it releases so much dopamine and then they run away again and then it like is pulled back and then you have this natural trigger in your brain to go chasing after that. And it can create like a low key, like chemical related obsession. Hmm. <laughs> you are not the center of the effing universe, or you are not the effing center of the universe. I feel like this is talking about this person, not you, okay? They are not the center of the universe. There are other things that will release the feel good hormones in your brain, so many other things. Go look it up and go do those things instead, all right? Woo, what a great deck. All right, getting advice from Mama Moon. Uh, she is like, love her, one of my favorite spirit guides. And she rules over emotions and your routine, and all that good stuff, your intuition. What is her advice on this matter? What is her advice on this matter? We have, have faith in your dreams, waxing crescent moon. What I'm seeing in this is focus on the things you want to grow in your life at this time. Focus on your own dreams, your own success, your own creativity, whatever it is that you want. You know, if you have a dream to travel, a dream to get healthy, a dream to get rich, a dream to have great friends, focus on that stuff right now. Don't focus on this person, okay? That is, yeah, Mama Moon speaking. And our final pieces of advice from the romance angels. And also I, I would add in there, um, any deity of love and relationship, Venus, Aphrodite, all that good stuff, Freya, 
what do they advise you to do? Oh dear, that was <laughs> scary. <laughs> Very soon, clearly decide what you want so it comes to you now. I really do feel like you're in a powerful place of manifestation at this point in your life. So if you focus really, really hardcore on your own growth, you're gonna see it happen a lot for you right now. Um, now that you're single and it, it'll just, I feel like you are wasting so much energy just on this person. So um, I would also say like, focus on what you do want when it comes to love. Like write out a really long list of all the traits that you, you need in a partner. Like write out your standards and do not compromise those standards for anyone you know that will that will help you heal from this you know writing out your standards and seeing how this person did not meet them and you're sticking by those standards you know for your in the name of your own self-love you, you will not settle for less and then another thing that i would recommend you doing if you're struggling with like the after emotions of a breakup is to write out a list of all the reasons why you missed that person I know it sounds so backwards, you know, I've seen so many people write out a list of all of the things that that person did wrong to like try to trick themselves into getting over it, but I have found the opposite to be more effective. Write out a list of all of the things you missed about that connection and then just notice how those things are not exclusive to that person. Like if you miss talking to them on the phone every day, you can find someone else to talk to on the phone every day really easily, like a friend. Um, date someone else, you know, like it's it's not a them exclusive thing. So Moving on or try to meet those needs yourself if you can if you missed their their money their wealth their lifestyle That's something you can build yourself We also have pay mm-hmm mm -hmm. Pay attention to the red flags, honey Pay attention to the red flags. That is the messages from your love angels and deities. The signs are cautioning you Y'all it's all lining up all these cards are flowing together saying the same story don't go back don't pour energy into this soulmate and flirt yes there is a soulmate coming in for you very soon if you want it um so i mean honestly i do feel though that a lot of you uh, might be needing some time just to yourself to heal to reflect and but when you do decide to get back out there and and play the little flirting dating game uh you're gonna come prepared not to get yourself into another situation like this because you wrote out your standards and you won't sacrifice those standards for anyone. You, you see, that's what this relationship has taught you. Reflect on what this relationship has taught you because your next connection, it's gonna be a soulmate. I really feel it. Like this person feels like the last karmic relationship before a really, good soulmate enters. So I, I love that for you. Thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for the next reading. Bye-bye. Okay, group number two, welcome. Let's see where the energy is at in this connection right now, just to make sure that you selected the right group. If this portion of the reading does not resonate at all, don't force it to. You can go back and select another group, or maybe there's just no messages for you here today. After we're done this, we will dive into the tarot, some channeled messages from your person to you, and we will get some advice on this connection. So where this connection stands right now is being represented by the sun. Okay, I love this for you guys. This is happiness, this is success. This, this is really happy. I would be really shocked if group number two, you were separated from this person. Um, the sun really just comes out to show happiness. So there's that uh, joy in this connection and I'm also getting a sense of creativity shared amongst you, abundance, fertility, and just happiness, you know? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do it like person A's energy in this connection right now, and person B's energy in this connection right now. And I don't know which one's which, so you're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. So if you really resonate and feel like you're group B, for example, and group A sounds like your person, go with it. If you feel like you and your person are in both groups, then you might just be mirroring each other. So person A is being represented by the nightingale in reversed. This is what it looks like upright. Person B is being represented by the cosmic egg in reversed. 
and this is what it looks like upright. So I feel with this nightingale energy, uh, I'm seeing the blue here, which has to do with the throat chakra, but it did come out in reverse. So I almost do wonder, I, like I'm getting this kind of frantic energy from uh, group or person A, and it just seems like, I don't know why the first thing that's coming to my mind is that they are having a hard time just allowing themselves to enjoy the connection, having a hard time allowing themselves to trust and to like feel positively about this. Maybe they have been in a lot of vulnerable situations before. Maybe they've been traumatized. Maybe they've been through bad relationships. And you know, when, you're, when you've gone through that, when a healthy relationship does show up, it can be a little bit hard to kind of trust in that and move forward with that. So I don't know, that's kind of what I'm seeing in, in the Nightingale in reversed. So interesting. Uh, and then we have person B with the cosmic egg in reversed. Person B is definitely going through some type of transformation at this time. Uh, you know, we see the snake here. The snake represents transformation, you know, growing out of your old skins, growing out of the old way that you've been living life. So I, I feel like this cosmic egg person uh, is definitely in a transformative time in their life at this moment where they're kind of learning how to let go of their comfort zone, I wanna say learning how to let go of what has been normal for them for a really long time and, and open their hearts to something new. I, I do feel that this cosmic egg person, um, when they met the nightingale person, they really opened their eyes to so many different things. Like the nightingale must have taught the cosmic egg person so many different things or like opened their eyes up to more possibilities in life. I feel like the cosmic egg person might have been living their life a little bit in their comfort zone or just kind of living the way that uh, they they were raised and they never really went out of that comfort zone. You know, it's kind of like staying in your hometown type of energy or staying in that comfort zone. And then the nightingale comes out and this is someone who definitely has kind of traveled either literally or like mentally throughout life. Like they've seen more of life, it seems, than the cosmic egg person. So they're, this person, the nightingale, is awakening a lot within the cosmic egg through this connection. And the nightingale is learning from the cosmic egg person to be more trusting, to open their hearts up more to good situations and, you know, ju just trust that this could be a good connection. So the nightingale's person's um, chakra oracle says dissipating with the solar plexus. I do, and there's another bird here as well. I do think that one fear that the nightingale person has is that they'll get bored of this connection or maybe that it feels like a little bit boring, a little bit bland. And I do want to say that is totally normal to feel that way when you're used to toxic connections, when you're used to really dramatic uh, connections or toxic connections where it's like a hot and cold game and you have to chase after someone or they have to chase after you and it's like this back and forth, or even if you just grew up in a really chaotic environment, when you finally get yourself into a nice healthy relationship where you can like really rely on that person and trust them and, and be together for a long time, it will feel boring to you. Like straight up, it'll feel boring to you because what you're used to is all this drama, all of this protecting your energy and pouring energy into a connection to make sure that it stays alive. And, and you know, so I would say to the Nightingale person, if it's you watching, which I, for some reason, I do feel like it's a lot of you, um, that it's totally normal, it's totally fine and okay to, feel this way. Now, if you're the cosmic egg person and you're worried because your your partner, your person, the nightingale here is worried that things might be a little bit boring, maybe this is a conversation you can have with them and explain to them like in healthy connections, it's totally fine to be bored of each other. It's totally fine to not have that drama all the time. And when we're having those moments, that just means we have to find passion in our own lives and really tune into our own individualities, your own hobbies, your own friends, traveling, like adding that spice of life, um, kind of making that spark within your own life personally. 
So I feel like that's something that the Nightingale person has to learn through this connection. The chakra wisdom for the cosmic egg person is impatience <laughs> with the throat chakra. So there we have that. I, I do feel like they are very willing to move this connection along quickly and move it forward and like speak their feelings and like you know I don't I don't think the cosmic egg person is going to hold back their feelings in this connection like they're just ready for things to move forward to see where they stand with this person to see how you'll grow together or even like there could be an impatience when it comes to life goals so if this is already a long-term connection you're already happy there could be a sense of impatience when it comes to your personal goals like maybe you really want to move maybe you really want to have some career growth um, so I do think that one kind of lesson that the cosmic egg person needs to learn from this connection is how to sit back and enjoy the present moment a little bit more and temper out their impatience. And then the energy oracle for the nightingale person is rest and rejuvenation reversed. They're definitely not giving themselves enough time to rest. Also with rest and rejuvenation reversed and dissipating, I almost wonder if there's something off with their nervous system, if they have like a PTSD or something, high anxiety, um, something like that that makes them like really wired. Um, and when you're in that state of being like really wired, really like high anxiety, high stress, when there's not a lot going on, it can feel really boring. And that's where the dissipating card comes in because you're needing that constant stimulation, even if they have ADHD. Needing that constant stimulation may be um, something you're working through right now, but that is why this, this card's coming out in reverse, the rest and rejuvenation, because it's like, I, I, I wonder if they think that more stimulation, more caffeine, more input into their mind, body, and soul is the solution, but I'm actually seeing that the solution for them is resting, rejuvenating, relaxing, like actually tuning into more calmer things will help them out a lot more. So that, that's really interesting. Also, I do feel like the Nightingale person here is on a healing journey and this connection is bringing out this healing journey for them for sure. Um, this relationship to them kind of feels like calm after so many storms. <laughs> like finally, finally I can rest, I can relax, I can heal. And the Nightingale person really does need the stability of this connection and the security of it to kind of let all of the storms that have passed them really, you know, really passed them, you know, processing all of those emotions, uh, becoming a better person. And I feel like in the first couple of years in this connection, the Nightingale person is really going to be on this healing journey of just relearning what it means to be in a healthy relationship. And I am also seeing like regulating their nervous system as well. It's going to be something that they're going to work to do. Um, for the first few years of this connection, if this will last that long or if it has lasted that long. So that is interesting. And at some points along those journeys, along that journey of like regulating their nervous system healing, um, they may, I don't wanna say slip up, they may mistakenly believe that they need more stimulation, more things, more stuff to kind of distract themselves and I'm almost seeing this weird, it's so hard to describe what I'm seeing in my mind right now, like negative cycle that repeats where they do something or they feel like they need to do something to really spike their dopamine, spike their attention. And then, you know, what comes up must come down. And then they get into this low and it almost feels like this almost like two weeks of feeling high and energetic, two weeks of feeling depressed and low and understimulated. And they keep, when they get into that depression, they're like, oh my gosh, I need to stimulate myself. Whatever that may look like to them, like maybe they go on a random trip or they spend a lot of money or they, this really does sound like so many different um, like mental health issues uh, that could, it could be like a bipolar, it could be like ADHD, um, PMDD, all of these things have th this like cyclical up and down. And I almost feel like they think the solution is by chasing those ups, <laughs> if that makes sense. But this rest and rejuvenation card is saying, actually, you just need more rest, more calming, like you, more calming influences in your life 
So I don't know, that's a really interesting message. It, it's really talking about their health and the connection to their mind for some reason coming out in this uh, connection. So the energy oracle for the cosmic egg person is anxiety in reverse. Okay, it looks like we're both dealing with some mental health stuff here. And the cosmic egg person is having anxiety, impatience. Yeah, wow, okay. <laughs> you guys are giving me very similar energies. Uh, like you might mirror each other at times, but anxiety, impatience, they're also very like, I need to calm down. Both parties in this relationship needs to calm down, okay? You don't need all this fancy, like these fancy experiences with each other. You don't need, it just, it just feels to me like you're, you're both kind of trying to chase the dopamine high in this connection or chase those like lusty hormones, keep them going. You know when you first get together with someone and all of your hormones are like raging and you just want to spend the rest of your life with each other. It feels like the cosmic egg person is definitely in that energy right now. And um, I, I just want you both to, this feels very juvenile. I wonder if a lot of people who selected group number two are younger, I would say young as like either teen, uh, early 20s, or even like late 20s, early 30s, if it's one of your first relationships. Uh, Cause it, it kind of gives me the sense of two people really chasing the, the dopamine high, the adrenaline, the, the, the love hormones that are triggered um, at the beginning of connections. And I, I almost wonder if n neither of you have been in a really long-term connection before uh, because those feelings will fade, okay? I, I promise you they will fade. Your passions for each other, uh, getting that sense of like a hormonal cocktail from another person, that will fade away with time. And that's a good thing, <laughs> okay? That is a good thing. I feel like our minds were kind of messed up by like Disney princess movies and things like that, romanticizing relationships way too much. And there are a lot of people who chase this, these hormonal passionate highs um, that come naturally when you first partner up with someone. And if you're looking to m manifest a long-term relationship, you have to acknowledge and admit that there will be times of boredom. There will be times of like not getting that from your person. And that's where you have to say, I'm in charge of my own happiness. And I feel like that will really weed away those who are codependent. You know, don't be codependent and don't be dependent on that feeling either for your happiness. Um, so many people, they become what's called a serial monogamist because they get into a relationship and it's it's fine, it's dandy, you know, all of those love hormones, oh my gosh, I wanna be with them forever. And then of course, naturally, like between nine, I would say like nine months to two years, um, that will start to fade away. Those feelings will start to fade away. And then they're like, oh, well, I just don't feel like I like this person that much or like I'm not feeling as passionate anymore. The sparks aren't there anymore, what do I do? And then they just break up, find a new person and they're, they're chasing that high. So I, I do wonder if the cosmic egg person um, <laughs> or both people here really need to hear that, uh, you know, if you want something long-term, you're gonna have to stay loyal and kind of like learn how to have passion in your own life outside of relationships um, as well as how to consciously cultivate passion within relationships okay so that passion gets replaced with a sense of comfortability and a sense of complete and utter trust you know if you make it past those passionate hormonal <laughs> honeymoon phase of relationship and then you go into the more trusting phase um that phase is equally as fun if not more i personally enjoy it more because like you just completely trust this person can be yourself around them and then the passion that you have in your life is is something that is built between the two of you like maybe you both have a passion for traveling or you both have a passion for um fostering animals or something and then your passion is derived from those things so I think with the Sun card, there's a lot of potential here for long-term uh, stuff, but you need to kind of uh, do some maturing together is what I would say. So let's dive into the tarot and see what comes out for you. We're just gonna kind of pull um, without any questions and just seeing what the story is, what comes out to kind of show 
where your connection is at in general. So let's see. And I'm just pulling them face down. This is from the Heaven and Earth Tarot. Don't know why I wanted to use it. Just felt like it today. All right, first card out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards is the Eight of Swords Upright. There's a sense of feeling stuck, a, a sense of stagnancy. Hmm. I do want to say like, how can we add passion back into this connection? Or can we just like openly admit that we aren't passionate anymore, you know? For, for many of you, I almost feel like you've been with this person for a while and you're really happy with them, but it's like maybe there's an element that's lacking. Like maybe you lack sexual chemistry. Maybe you aren't just super passionate anymore. There's just a sense of, you know, I don't know. But it's like, you don't want to like leave them over that. And I don't think you should, you know, there, there's something that maybe you could talk about, work out an agreement, work out something that works for you. I also feel guided to say that your relationship is your own and what you do the agreements that you have within that relationship is up to you and every single relationship is different. You can go online and get all types of advice for this situation, but at the end of the day, your situation is very unique. So I would say listen to your intuition and do what feels right to you, okay? But let's see what else comes up next to that Eight of Swords. We have the Five of Swords, Defeat. Wow, I was not expecting this. I really wasn't. I. This is a card that comes up whenever there's like arguments or tension and next to the eight of swords You know, this is like feeling stuck feeling Like this situation isn't gonna move forward or something. Hmm. Let's get some more cards cuz something's a miss here We have the king of wands actually I'm just gonna flip them all over We have the Nine of Cups in reversed. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling this was gonna come out. This card is really showing me. I think the problem in this connection right now is that you two need to work on your sense of individuality more and um, cultivating happiness uh, as individuals. I do wonder if uh, someone in this connection is feeling like they need more alone time, more alone time to just do their own thing, focus on their own passions, their own hobbies. That would explain the Eight of Swords uprights. And if that is a problem or a fight, in this connection that would explain the five of swords but you know i i could start a whole another youtube channel just on relationship advice alone i swear it's it's so so important as individuals in long-term relationships to have that individuality and that is something that is so like lacking in today's society and culture you know we're taught that Oh yeah, once you get married, uh, once you're this long-term thing, like you're a deal, like you're a package deal, you're a, you become like the same person. And there's kind of like, it's become normal to let your platonic friendships fall to the wayside when you come become a partner. And just so many, like spending so much time with that partner and it's like, don't neglect your personal individual life you know have your own friends have your own hobbies solo travel if you want like do your own stuff away from this relationship i think that will help you heal or help this relationship heal although i can understand the frustration if you are doing that but your partner is not doing that um and they might even especially if they try to make you feel bad for having your own individual life that would be you know an issue that needs addressing, but let's see. We have the nine, or sorry, six of pentacles upright. Yeah, I, I really don't feel like this is a toxic connection at all. I do feel like there's an equal give and take here, and I do think that the playing fields are pretty fair here. The relationship as a whole feels really healthy, really nice, um, so I don't really have much negative to say. Although, yeah, we do have the 10 of pentacles in reversed, so, there isn't really clear, like a clear path just yet, okay? I feel like right now you're in the stage where you're trying to figure out your legacy with this person. The Ten of Pentacles shows family, marriage, home, living together, building wealth together. So I almost wonder if in reversed, um, you're not quite there yet, or there are some issues within the home, within the family that need addressing. Um, for example, it might be an argument uh, that's like, I, 
I, I just am getting dumb arguments, honestly. Like, they're not even bad, they're not even toxic. It's just dumb stuff. Like, maybe your partner is at home a lot and you don't have that much alone time. Like, it's just something so dumb, you know? So, I, I don't even feel like talking about half the stuff that's coming to my mind because it's just something that can so easily be resolved between you two. Also, keeping in mind, the King of Wands, this is a really healthy, mature person. So, whoever the masculine person is in this connection, and again, doesn't have anything to do with gender, I say that all the time, this channel does nothing to do with gender. Whoever's the masculine person in this connection, or maybe you're both the masculine person, um, they are very much willing to work as a team. And there is like a fiery sense of just wanting to keep that spark alive, wanting to be really close um, with the other person we have the queen of cups okay what a beautiful pair so these are two different people but they're a king and queen so like i said healthy relationship two mature people for different reasons also you could be a fire sign and a water sign uh you don't have to be or you could just have those uh signs heavy in your chart so i would say sun moon rising venus and that would be fire sign would be aries leo sagittarius water sign would be cancer scorpio pisces um, but we see someone here who's very like snuggly, loving, nurturing, um, really valuing the home, really valuing like emotions, pets, children, family, creativity, uh, just very loving, very empathetic, psychic, spiritual. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a lot of you guys. And then the other person in this connection has a lot of fire energy, like really fired up, energetic, um, warm, sociable. Uh, maybe even well traveled into culture, learning random facts. <laughs> so we see two people who are really cool together. They're not a matching pair, but I like that there's differences here. You get what I'm saying? So it's, it's really good. And then your final tarot card is the Knight of Wands. A return to that spark, I would say. And also this is showing that this relationship is moving forward in the right direction. And I think that if there's any issue that you have, you can easily communicate it here and find like a happy solution between the two of you because you're both mature. So um, if you're worried about losing that spark, if you are worried that things aren't moving fast enough, um, if you're worried about whatever this is in reverse, this is wealth. So there might be some money problems, a problem within the home that needs a solution, just something like that. You guys are a really good team and you're gonna work well together. So. I don't really have anything negative to say. The only piece of advice I would give in addition to what I just said would be like, just making sure that you're both staying true to your individuality and doing things for yourself. If you're unhappy in a relationship, I would ask yourself, are you happy as a single solo person? You know, to mentally separate yourself from your partner. Are you happy as an individual? If you were single right now, would you be happy with your life, with your circumstances? If the answer is no, then why is that? the case you know what could you do differently to make yourself happy all right so let's dive into channeled messages we will be using three different oracle decks for this so the first deck that i'm going to use is actually a homemade oracle deck and we're asking your person's higher self if your person was 100 percent honest and accurate about their feelings for you right now what would they say all right we already have one card that came out let's see oh gosh oh gosh <laughs> cards everywhere all right, three cards. Anything else going once? Anything else going twice? Anything else going thrice? Okay, you only have three cards for this deck. First, we have the Six of Pentacles, which already came out for you right here. So it's coming out twice to be like, yeah, I meant what I said. <laughs> I want to support you any way that I can. So your person really like would not mind um, giving you gifts, feeling they feel connected, offering financial or physical help. For some reason, that's really standing out to me. Uh, maybe you're in a process right now where you're healing. This could be physical, this could be mental, and maybe you can't put that much effort into your career, into your work into that and they want to support you any way that they can um they're offering genuine support and there is an equal give and take even if the give and take is not completely mirrored so what that means is like sometimes when you're in these like long-term connections um and like life partnerships really 
you can both give in different ways to the household, to the connection, and it doesn't have to be exactly mirrored. Like you don't have to make the same exact amount of money as your partner and you don't have to offer the same exact thing. So like, for example, um, if one person really loves cleaning a lot and they do most of that, and the other person really loves making money and they bring most of that, you know, you're both giving equally in different ways. So. I just feel a genuine support coming from your person and I, I feel like that needs to be emphasized. I, I do feel like a lot of you guys are the nightingale in reverse and you're like almost in denial that you're in a healthy relationship when you are and it's like no, like there's no catch, there's no strings attached to their generosity, like just accept it. Then we have the hero font. <laughs> Uh, we or you make me more spiritually aware. I've learned so much from you I really this is confirming like so many of you are definitely the nightingale because if you recall the cosmic egg person um, Was being like a lot of awakenings were being triggered from this connection like they were learning so much from the nightingale like I feel like the nightingale person in this connection, which is most likely you, has opened the eyes of the cosmic egg person to so many different concepts, ideas, ways of thinking. Uh, like, I, I am almost getting the vision, like, <laughs> the nightingale person, for some of you, you might have literally converted their religion or their spiritual beliefs or introduced them to a whole new way of living, uh, introduced them to a whole new hobby. Like, maybe you're really into hiking and then you got them into that or maybe you're really into um organic eating and farmers markets and they never even thought of that so i don't know these are really dumb examples but you get the point <laughs> um there's like a student teacher dynamic here where i almost feel like you're both student and teacher because you're both learning so much from each other uh there's a spiritual ascension ascension happening in this connection um soul contracts i feel like you were definitely fated to meet each other and this really does feel like a soulmate relationship because of how peaceful it is and instead of like teaching each other lessons the hard way <laughs> you know through heartbreak and through negativity you're teaching each other lessons just from your own beautiful souls combining um, also, this is a card of marriage, so that may be in the cards for you if you want it. <laughs> or you might already have that, I don't know. We have the Three of Pentacles. I'm trying to impress you. Mm -hmm. They're always trying to impress you, I really feel it. Going out of their way to clean and decorate or showering and dressing their best for you, becoming their best version and showing off. Okay, let's move on to the next channeled messages deck. This is the Hidden Truth Oracle. Let's see what your person wants to say. Let's get some more messages for their true, hidden, or shown. They might have even told you hit feelings for you. I also just get the feeling that like none of you guys are surprised by this reading because I almost feel like this person was already straight up with their feelings for you. And it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. They already told me that though. So like, what's the hidden stuff? And it's like, there is no hidden stuff. Group number two. I really feel like this this is a healthy communication. There's healthy, healthy relationship. So it might be a boring reading. See, the, see, I feel like I'm picking up on your energy so much. <laughs> Like you're just waiting for the drama and I'm like, there is no drama. Both of you need to regulate your nervous system somehow because it just feels like you're so used to drama and chaos. And now that you have a peaceful thing going here, it's just like you're waiting or you're feeling impatient and anxious. Both of you, honestly, both of you. Cause Cosmic Egg Person had that anxiety card, that impatience, like when, when are things gonna be moving forward? And then the Nightingale Person had that, um, that dissipating card and the rest and rejuvenation reverse. Like you both need to relax. And real, I would truly like look up ways to regulate your nervous system. And I feel like for both of you, it's like actually a matter of calming down, relaxing as opposed to constantly seeking that stimulation. So any channel messages, Hidden Truth Oracle or like are we just not, there's no messages for, okay, we have one. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about you, of course. You're always on their mind. Like, I, I'm seeing them just like going out, grocery shopping and thinking like, oh, well, this person, my partner really likes this food. Like, should I get it for them? Or like, should I, you know, do a certain thing? You know, just like everyday little things. They're just like, oh, it would be so much more fun if they were here or 
should I do this for them? Like, it, it just feels like a healthy relationship, y'all. Like, <laughs> all right, I don't think we're getting any more out of this deck. There doesn't seem to be anything hidden, <laughs> but we will get a final um, deck for the channeled messages, another homemade deck. And it says, I am jealous. Okay, so maybe they get a little bit jealous from time to time, but I mean, I'm not gonna say that's, healthy but it's it's common jealousy is a human emotion as long as they handle it properly that's all that matters but you know maybe there is an issue with that maybe they weren't handling it properly so that's just something you can talk through um as long as you're not being unreasonable you know like and i feel like yeah that goes back to the message here of the one thing i would say about this connection is you both need to like have your own individual lives um if there's jealousy involved then that may prevent you from both wanting to have your own individual lives, I guess. But yeah, I just give each other space to miss each other. Like that's what I'm saying. Give each other space to miss each other and step, like kind of force yourself to still like have your own life outside of this connection and make sure they're doing the same thing as well. Anything else? Any other channel messages? Okay, we had like three come out. I'm not ready for commitment. We will grow apart in time. And I value our platonic connection most. I, okay, is it weird that I'm kind of getting these fears uh, as like fears rather than feelings? Like they fear that either you or them are not ready for commitment or not necessarily that you're not ready, but like because it feels so healthy, I almost feel like you're both afraid that you, you're just gonna grow apart because you're gonna have to find that passion elsewhere. And it's like, there's so many different ways that you can bring that passion and maintain that passion into your relationship if you get really comfortable and trusting with each other. And time will show you what you need to do. Maybe it's traveling together. Maybe it's opening up your relationship ethically. Maybe it's um, just doing your own thing, having your own friends, having your own hobbies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just seeing these as fears. And also I'm seeing the platonic connection thing, like that's the strongest element in your relationship. It seems like it really does feel like your best, best friends. So I, I love that for you. So let's finish off with some advice for you in this relationship. Honestly, I felt like this was one of the most uneventful <laughs> love readings that I've done in a while. It, it just feels healthy, guys. It feels like a normal, healthy relationship. So stop worrying. Stop trying to nitpick everything. Mm, any advice though from Spirit? You know, uh, have you eaten? You're acting like a big ass baby. <laughs> Make sure you're getting enough food. Okay, okay. This actually kind of resonates with something that I was theorizing earlier, that there may be something with your hormones. Like I, I keep coming back to like PMDD, um, which is where it's essentially PMS for like two weeks before your period. Like something like that, that's really cyclical or just making sure that your hormones, your endocrine system, your nervous system is regulated. I honestly feel like that if it's unregulated may be causing issues in your relationship and it's not necessarily the relationship itself but it's your own inner mental health and and hormones kind of having you feel anxious and impatient or like things are dissipating like you know what i'm saying so make sure you're taking care of your health mental and physical because that actually might be the problems that you're facing in this relationship. And the back said, says, you need food in your belly. Eat an effing taco. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Moving on to the angels. What is your advice? What is your advice, angels? We have a year from now. A year from now, this relationship will have had some type of big event happen that will kind of definitely, definitely clarify things for you. So I definitely, I feel like a year from now, you will know exactly where you stand with this person, what, the direction that this is heading in and what you can expect from here on out. That's lovely, I love that card. Um, we also have ask for help from others. I agree, I agree wholeheartedly go to a doctor and get your blood work done. Make sure that everything's like going okay in your body, all right? Um, if you want a therapist, get a therapist. Really do the most to make sure that you are mentally and physically 
good. Honestly, so many relationship problems are actually you problems. You know, relationship relationship problems are just either one or both people in a relationship are not taking enough care of themselves. Honestly, like I can root back like 99% of relationship problems to that. All right. And when you are in your best vibration, health, energy, and there's still a relationship issue, then you can say, okay, well, maybe this is coming from the other person, but really take care of yourself and just, just kind of watch as your relationship improves, you know, treat yourself as an individual more, um, instead of relying on your happiness from this relationship, keep in mind that you make your own happiness and how can you become a calmer, happier person? Because then you'll become a calmer, happier partner and have a calmer, happier relationship, you see? So your external reality, your relationships on the outside are literally just a reflection of what's going on on the inside. And a lot of these cards are saying, listen, like your insides are what matter here. All right. This relationship, it's, it's generally good. <laughs> so if you're having an issue with it, look within first that's what i'm seeing from the angels now let's get some messages from the romance angels romance angels what advice do you have for group number two what advice do you have for group number two group number two we have finances and career so we did see a financial message coming through earlier in the tarot with the ten of pentacles in reverse, uh, six of pentacles. There, there's a big emphasis here on, there's an equal give and take already. And I feel like there might, this might be a connection where one person makes significantly less money than the other person. And as long as you're both giving equally in some way, shape or form, I wouldn't worry too much about finances. You know what I'm saying? Like, say you have a house with someone or you're sharing a household with, with this partner, you live together and you know, maybe, you're the breadwinner, you're making all of the money and your person does not make nearly as much money. They don't work as much hours as you do, um, but they do like all of the cleaning, all of the grocery shopping, things like that. You know, that's an equal give and take. So I don't know, I, I just feel like financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Also, if you have financial stress, which is one of the worst stresses you can go through, I know firsthand, um, that should be taking your first and primary um, attention. Like you should be focusing on that right now the most. Don't be focusing on all these relationship issues that are in your head, like focus on the problem at hand. We also have retreats, exactly. Mm, it's time to disconnect from the world. I really do feel like a nice honeymoon or like vacation, get away with this person will do you so well and kind of reinvoke those passionate feelings here. Final piece of advice, final card of the reading from Mama Moon. She rules over emotions, relationships, uh, our daily cycles, our weekly and monthly cycles. What is her advice for you when it comes to this connection? What is your advice, Mama Moon? Yes, new moon in Leo. Confidence is your key to success. If you want this relationship to succeed, become confident in your own life as an individual. Like we've been saying, like become confident in yourself. How do you become confident in yourself? You, you know, take care of any financial issues that you're having. You take care of any health and mental health issues that you're having. You just take good care of yourself in general, have your own little friends, your own little hobbies, your own little life. As an individual, you have to maintain your your foundation, you know, as an individual, as a single person, make sure you're whole, generally you're, you're healed, you're good to go. You stand strong on your own, you know, and then that is the foundation that is required for this relationship to be successful. Okay. Now you might've already been a really happy, successful individual, and then you met this person. And then I guess like over time, maybe some type of like codependency kind of fell in there, or maybe you just became like really into each other. Um, but this is just a reminder, you know, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Make sure that you are keeping your confidence, your individual life up as well. And I feel like that will solve so many of your relationship issues here. Overall, I do feel like this is a successful relationship that has a lot of potential for long term stuff. You know, if you're into marriage, we're seeing marriage. We're seeing lasting like a super long time if you want. Um, so I, I love it for you. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for the next one. Bye-bye. 
Okay, group number three, let's take a look into this connection that you're asking about. We're gonna start off with an energy check by checking where this connection is currently at, where you're at in this connection, where they are at in this connection. Then we will get some tarot to kind of see the story that's taking place here, some channeled messages from your person to you, and then we'll finish off with some advice from spirits, okay? So first, your major arcana card that's representing just like where you're at in this connection right now is the High Priestess. Okay, very interesting. There's a lot of like unspoken feelings. Things are kind of like really in the 5D spirit spiritual the, whenever the high priestess comes out in a love reading it's kind of more like you're intuitively picking up what's going on in this connection but maybe things aren't being spoken quite directly but we're gonna have to get a lot more insight into this so let's see what the other cards are we have person a and person b now you might resonate with whichever side and you'll feel that your person that you're asking about is the other side but if you feel like you and your person are both in person a and b then that just means that you're mirroring each other okay so person a in this connection is being represented by the swan in reversed so this could be water sign cancer scorpio pisces but they don't have to be and this is someone who this is a mature water sign um in reverse, they might be a little bit more in their their, their shadow attributes uh, right now. Swans really give me the sense of monogamy, loyalty. So in reverse, I'm kind of wondering if they are, if there's something there with that, like if they are kind of really clingy or they are just feeling lonely and really craving that. I don't know. We're gonna get more insights into this, so let's keep going. The swan person's chakra card is abundance, okay, with the solar plexus chakra. This is actually a really good card. When it comes to this connection, they're feeling quite prosperous, uh, being in their gratitude energy. I'm just getting like positive energy from them generally feeling positive, trying to think positively about this connection. And yeah, I mean, straightforward, let's keep going. Their energy oracle is patience. Mm. Yeah, I can see that with the swan, uh, just kind of waiting for the other person to be ready, uh, having this sense of unconditional love. Whoever the swan person is in this connection, I feel like they are really sweet and they're willing to kind of work with the other person and tr try to find something that works best for both parties. Like I was literally just watching a video before this reading um, about this couple who's married, they have a family, they're really successful in their careers. And their story was that they went on a first date and then immediately the guy had to move out of state and neither of them could move uh, to be with each other because of their careers. And they had this whole long distance relationship for like a year. By the end of the year, he proposed. They even got married and still didn't live with each other. They were still long distance and were trying to figure something out. And then they got pregnant. And then by the time that the baby was born, they finally like kind of came together. So I, I don't know, I'm just getting this sense of Maybe, maybe this is long distance for some of you, but I feel like the swan person does want things to be together and perfect. Um, perhaps it's not quite there yet, or there's just like a minor disturbance in that minor disruption, but they're looking on the positive side and they're being really patient and willing to work with the other person. Also, they're very intuitive and I feel that they can feel the other person's energy in the 5D telepathically. Maybe you're showing up in each other's dreams even. So that's what I'm seeing with person A. Their energy is really good here. Person B is being represented by the gazelle in reversed. So this could be a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. By the way, they don't have you don't have to be these signs and your person doesn't have to be these signs. They can just exhibit a lot of the qualities those signs have. So the gazelle person, um, this is someone who is really beautiful physically. Both, both the gazelle and the swan. I'm getting like, you guys are an attractive couple. <laughs> and the gazelle person here is very, um, 
a little bit more high strung than the swan person, I wanna say. They are really observant, and this is someone who can read into the most minor shifts in energy. And I feel like you both share that quality, which is why the High Priestess card is representing the both of you and this connection, because it's like, like literally, if they just ever so slightly shift the way that they're texting or shift the tone in their voice. You're both like, is there something wrong or what's going on? You know, there's there's a high psychic element in this connection. Um, and so uh, I, I, I do think with the gazelle being in reverse, there may be a slight sense of anxiety being a bit on edge here. So I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what that is about. The chakra card for the gazelle is <laughs> impatience. This came up for group number two as well. Like we were saying, it to me, that it feels like there is something about this connection that prevents it from being like fully as enmeshed um, as you want it to be. And it's so funny that the gazelle person has the impatience card and then the swan person has the patience card. <laughs> I feel like the gazelle person, well, that is also an attribute of fire. It wants to move faster. It wants things to transform rapidly. Whereas water is more, you know, okay um, with the slower movements, you know? I would say out of the four elements, earth is like the slowest moving. So we don't, see that here so that's good um but yeah i, I that is so interesting i <laughs> uh, what is their energy adjacent possibilities is coming out for the gazelle in reversed like i i just feel like they're going through their mind thinking of all these different scenarios why isn't this moving forward why can't we figure this out and the speed of the connection is actually really bothering the gazelle person in reversed whereas it might not bother the swan person that much you know they want to be more enmeshed i feel that but like they're thinking from a more positive perspective where it feels like the gazelle person is just kind of like wanting things to move faster because they're keeping their eyes open to all the different possibilities that can go on. And I, I do wonder if the gazelle person um, is letting that anxiety kind of get the best of them and they're thinking like, oh, is there someone else in the swan's life? Or what if something else comes up? Or like just going through all these different scenarios, all these different future paths. So that's what we're working with here. If that resonates, continue watching. If none of this resonated at all, you probably selected the wrong group. So you can go back and select another group or maybe there's just no messages for you here today. So let's shuffle up the tarot and see the story here. Hopefully the tarot will give us, okay, cards are already flying out, some more information into this. I, I'm really curious as to what's going on here. Um, and by the way, you guys can feel free to comment your story down below uh, to kind of let me know what's going on here. Like, is this long distance or is there, what is it that seems to be the holdup that one person's really patient about and the other person's really impatient about? <laughs> All right. It seems to me there also needs to be a compromise here on the timing of things. So I don't know if that resonates it resonates we're gonna pick eight cards so three four five six seven eight all right first card out is the nine of pentacles in reversed this is what it looks like upright material gain i do feel like it may help to focus on your own finances hobbies. Also, if you are an entrepreneur of any kind, um, this is saying that that may need a, your attention at this time. Uh, and I do, I weirdly feel like many of you are the gazelle person feeling a bit impatient here. And the message for that is when you get into these bouts of overthinking and anxiety and feeling impatient, Perhaps some healthy distractions will be good for you. Healthy distractions as in like doing something that is beneficial for you as an individual. So like being productive, cleaning, um, working out, anything that you need to do to be productive. You know, I think that will 
help you. Also, the Nine of Pentacles gives the wisdom of attraction. When you are enjoying your own life as an individual, you have your own little friends, your own projects, your own hobbies, especially your own passion, something you feel really, really passionate about that you want to grow. Um, like this is the card of the entrepreneur, right? Anybody who owns their own business knows that it is literally like a baby and you feel so passionately about it and you're kind of obsessed with it, somewhat a workaholic. Um, but that is really attractive to other people because it's like you have your thing that's yours. And with this card in reverse, it's saying you need to get more into that energy here, okay? Remember your passions um, and let them kind of distract you from the emotional nature of this connection. All right, second card out, we have the Knight of Wands upright. This definitely feels like the gazelle's energy, ready to charge forward, ready to move this connection forward. This is a good card upright. It shows a lot of passion shared between the two of you. And I mean, with passion comes like just wanting to see the growth. And again, it doesn't even have to be romantic passion. Like if you have anything in your life, any goal that you're passionate about, you just wanna see those results. You just wanna see the growth. It brings so much joy to you. But you even in romantic relationships, it's the same thing. You want to see it move forward. You want to like grow with this person upright. You know, we are seeing forward movement here. I would definitely say like, if this connection is in fact growing and any issues that you are having here are being resolved, um, try to temper out your emotions if, if you're feeling too impatient. The third card out is the two of wands in reversed dominion. This is what it looks like upright. And this makes a lot of sense. I am kind of getting you looking at this relationship, trying to figure out kind of the rest of your life. Um, I'm seeing an issue here might be that you're focusing too much on trying to have every single thing answered about the future, trying to figure out exactly how this is gonna work out, exactly how your future is gonna pan out. Where does this person how does this person play into your future? And if, if you're the gazelle person, I'm seeing so much anxiety surrounding that. Like you looking at all the adjacent possibilities and trying to calculate everything. And um, it, it's kind of like a, that's where this impatience is coming from. Like I need answers now, it's making me anxious. So I would say work on your anxiety, uh, channel that energy into a passion project because yeah, it just feels like it's, it's a little bit stressing you out here. Fourth card out, we have the Eight of Swords, Shortened Force. Yeah, being really trapped in your thoughts, overthinking can really kill this connection, guys. Um, I, I do feel that the swan person here, and for, for a lot of you, to be honest, I feel like the swan person is your person, not you is the one that's really optimistic about this, um, thinking abundantly, being patient, trying to work on solutions. <laughs> and then the gazelle person, which I do feel like is a lot of you guys really in your head, really overthinking this, um, just being anxious, you know, and, and not really moving forward. I don't know, it, it just feels like you're stuck in this place mentally and, and we need to break out of it. But let's, let's see what the other cards have to say, get some more info on that. The nine of wands in reversed, great strength. Mm, yeah, and if we look at this card upright, we see here someone who has been injured and they've gathered all these wands. The wands represent passion. It represents like all of the things we have going in our lives, our friends, our projects, our life, right? And he's been hurt before. He's been attacked before. His happiness was attacked before. So he's really scared and kind of protecting his happiness, his peace, um, kind of defensively, a little bit on edge. And I'm, I'm seeing you with this card in reverse, I, I'm seeing this being emphasized even more where it's like, is this gonna end up in another heartbreak? Um, can, can I trust you? Like, <laughs> there's too much fear and overthinking uh, that's playing into this. Okay, we have the three of swords in reversed sorrow. There's a healing going on here. Okay, because when this card is actually really good in reverse, but upright, it shows an ending. It shows a heartbreak. In reverse, it's showing you moving on from an ending, a heartbreak, or like kind of pulling the swords out of the heart. Healing anything going on in this connection and in your own life that is kind of ruining this connection, ruining your happiness, your peace. 
So that is great. So we have the Ace of Cups. Once you do that, look at what we see. We see a return of love and we see new love coming in, new fertile blessings coming in. See that white dove up there? Is that a dove? Yeah, that's a dove. See that white dove up there? Doves represent long-term relationships, um, monogamy, um, or, or just like being committed to a partner. Doves mate for life. So this Ace of Cups is showing a new beginning in love, a new beginning in this relationship after healing a certain issue, pulling the swords out of your heart. These swords can be anything. Okay, I, I really feel like a lot of people are in long distance relationships for this uh, group. And this could even be like pulling out the swords could represent um, ending your long distance, you know, moving in together, having that new start. Or even for some of you guys, oh, I don't wanna say that. I was gonna say like, it could be like fertility issues and having that end, but like, I am not a doctor. I don't like predicting that. I don't wanna give anyone false hope if that's the case. But I am seeing a new beginning that will be exciting and passionate and emotionally fulfilling uh, regardless. So, mm, interesting. I wonder, I wonder. Hmm. There's something being offered here emotionally as well. So I, I do wonder if this is like a proposal for some of you, a baby with this person. Um, or just a new start with them in general. They're, like there's something new and really positive here. And then we have the Six of Wands reversed victory. I feel like this is what you are heading towards. It's still a journey though, you know, you're not quite here yet, but being in reversed, it's saying like you are heading in this direction. And I do see you making positive growth with that Knight of Wands. Like I think you're doing all the right things to move this forward and to get a happy outcome here with this person in this connection. Um, but yeah, I, I think a little bit of patience will go a long way. Um, now, for some of you guys, if this is someone you have separated from and you're still in separation, uh, I, I can definitely see a defensiveness coming in and just kind of trying to move on in a sense. And, and we do see like finally healing from this and a new beginning. If you are in separation with this person, I will say I feel like this new beginning is with someone else. But I mean, for a few of you, it could possibly mean reconciliation. You're gonna have to like feel it out yourself there. I, I just definitely see, um, maybe some of you guys are frustrated with your partner because you want some type of development to happen in your relationship to bring you closer. Maybe you're waiting for them to propose. Maybe you're waiting to like move in. Maybe even if you're separated, maybe you're waiting for them to reach out and apologize. So I, I'm just getting this sense of waiting, which is causing impatience, but I never recommend waiting for anything in life. Okay, live life as if your current reality is all there is. Okay, what would you do right now to make yourself Become this nine of pentacles, you know, self-sufficient, happy, really passionate about life. What would you do right now um, to manifest that? And that is when you're at your most attractive. And when you're at your most attractive, you're more likely to bring in whatever this thing is that you want anyways. So it's almost like when you stop caring, that's when it comes. Does that make sense? Like the human body. <laughs> okay, moving on. We're going to get some channeled messages from your person to you. So let's see what comes out. We're gonna start with the homemade oracle, the channeled love messages oracle. If your person was completely open, honest, and accurate about how they feel about you, what would they say? We have quite a few cards coming out. All right, they got a lot of feelings. All right, there is five cards. The first one is of course the lovers, beautiful. And it says, we have to make a mature decision about this relationship. I think I love you. We need a future that's fulfilling for both of us. Yeah, that's what I'm really feeling from your person. Like there is some type of decision or offer that needs to be made here that's mature for both of you to be happy long-term in this connection. And I feel like they're like you're in a state right now where you're pondering 
the future and how this will play out. Both of you are doing that. You're trying to find some type of compromise or solution to something. What, what exactly is your issue in your relationship? Please comment down below. Um, how can we make this more fulfilling? That's a question. Love yourself first. That's your advice. Soulmate energy, love decisions. Okay, whenever the lovers comes out, it means that there is a love, a big love decision that will be made. You know, it's, it's like a life altering decision card. Okay, we have the fool. I am so excited about you. It makes me feel like an idiot. New relationship energy, innocence, loyalty and devotion. I do see loyalty because we have the swan, we have the dove, we have the word loyalty. So if there's any question that you have about this person's loyalty, you can just throw that question right out the door because I feel like they are devoted. Doing anything you say and suggest, <laughs> you make them feel young, stumbling over their words. Like they just feel like, you know, their energy reminds me of like, um, kind of like a puppy, <laughs> like just so loyal. Like we'll do anything you ask them to do. They just want attention. They just want, you know, your love. We have queen of pentacles. You're so adorable. I just want to nurture you and take care of you. Um, this person may actually cook you food, provide snuggles, offer support. If they are the swan person, I totally, totally see that as well. Like just wanting to nurture you in a very physical way. Like make sure that you're well fed. Like, did you eat today? Um, are you tired? Do you need a massage? Like, do you want to snuggle? Like things like that. Uh, your person thinks that you're cute like a baby. Like, and by that, I mean like they might go up to you and be like, oh, so cute, look at your little face. Um, very protective over you, spoils you. They want to nurture your soul and body. I mean, can it get better than that? Like, we have temperance. Okay, this card tells me there's high emotional uh, emotions that they have for you. And in this connection, I have, yeah, <laughs> literally, I spoke too soon. It says, I have so many emotions for you. Uh, it's hard to hold it together. I try to remain calm and unbothered on the surface. So this person's trying to be patient. They're trying to look on the bright side, but there is a lot of emotions um, beneath the surface and they're just trying to like temper those out and think with their logical mind, which I think is the perfect way to go about this relationship, to be honest. They're trying to be both emotional and practical. There's a strong emotional intensity and you're learning to trust each other here. And then the last card from this deck, we have two more for the channel messages, is the Eight of Cups. I'm just not sure what else we can gain here. I don't think we are emotionally compatible. I'm sad about this, but I need to follow my intuition. We just want different things. Mm, maybe this is pointing out the problem that you guys are having where there's so much love that you both have for each other. There's a sense of like really wanting it to work out, but there may be like one critical thing that makes it not work out. Like maybe one person wants kids, the other person doesn't. Maybe one person wants marriage, the other person doesn't. Maybe it's long distance, you wanna live here, they wanna live there. Like we're trying to find a solution and they're really sad about this. Okay, I, I'm not seeing this as like, I want to leave you, I, they don't wanna leave you. They don't wanna be separated. But at the same time, like using your logical mind, like if there's a huge incompatibility like that, what else can we do? That's kind of the energy I'm feeling here, um, which is probably what this sorrow is representing. And with this in reverse, it's, it's showing like, kind of like healing from this incompatibility. And by that, I don't mean like anyone's gonna change per se, but like, I don't know, we do see some type of resolution, whether it's separating and finding new love or, whether it's, you know, the end of this incompatibility and you find something that works for both of you. Um, but like we started out with, I love you, but I we, we need a future that's fulfilling for both of us. The lovers like trying so hard to make a decision that will work for the both of you, trying so hard to bridge an incompatibility. That seems to be the issue there. It says something feels missing from this connection, emotional intelligence, but also emotional incompatibility. I need a sip of water with that one. Okay, we're gonna get some more channeled messages. This is another homemade deck. And then we'll use the Hidden Truth Oracle. Again, asking your person's feelings for you, unfiltered. <laughs> oh dear. What is group number three's person's feelings for them? If anyone wants to come out from this deck. 
I value our platonic connection most. So this is a card that basically says like, they just like hanging out with you, talking to you. That's their favorite part about this connection. It's not your body, it's not your looks. It's not anything like that. They like, really just enjoy talking to you and your energy, your presence. That's a great thing, that's a good thing, okay? What else do we have here? Whenever a relationship is built off of a strong platonic connection, it, it can be really long standing. So I like that. Any other true feelings? <sighs> he, yep, I told you I will never cheat or lie. They're loyal, okay? I share all of my feelings with you. They're telling you everything, okay? Don't, I don't think you need to have any trust issues here. I said that and what do you what do you know? <laughs> this is the next card. I am trustworthy. I wonder if you have like trust issues with this person or you think they're like low key wanting something else and it's like they do not, group number three, they do not, okay? <laughs> you are my best friend and closest contact. Guys, I wanna tell you that there are some really negative cards in this deck. <laughs> there, there really is, you know, I made this and I would say about half of this deck is negative stuff. I designed it for that reason because um, I, I basically designed this for people who watch love and re relationship readings and literally like half the people are actually in a good connection and the other half are like trying to get back with their ex and it's real toxic. All of your cards are good, okay? All of them are literally like, it, it tells a story here. Like let's read it in the order they came out. I value our platonic connection the most, like that's respect. I will never cheat or lie. I share all of my feelings with you. I am trustworthy and you are my best friend and closest contact. Those are all really good stuff. And I like, truly, they're never lying to you. Truly, they, well, like when they tell you that you are the person that they share the most things with, like when they say like, oh, you're my best friend, they're not lying. They're literally telling the truth. And if there is any trust issues here, I mean, like, listen, at the end of the day, this is a tarot reading on the internet. So like, if what I'm saying doesn't resonate with you and you still feel like they are lying, maybe this isn't your reading. Trust your intuition above all. But I will also say like, if you are having a little bit of trust issues because you've been hurt in the past, which would make sense because you have the nine of wands, which is a card of being hurt in the past. Um, and then right after that, you had the seven of, or the three of swords in reverse, which is again, a card of being hurt in the past. And we see like you needing to let go of that pain, that hurt, these trust issues in order for the Ace of Cups to come through. You're needing to let go of the sense of impatience, this sense of like not knowing whether or not you can trust them in order for the highest outcome of the situation to come through. <laughs> so let's get some messages from the Hidden Truth Oracle now. And then we will move on to your advice for this relationship. So is there any other feelings that group number three should know. Okay, this one says I left you before you could leave me. I, I'm not getting this in a very um, direct type of way. Like, I don't think this is literal. Okay, I think this is more so like your person may be trying to figure out everything that could possibly go wrong in this connection and resolve it now. You both seem to be a little bit too focused on the future instead of being focused on the present. So that's an issue that may exist in this connection. And we have, I am starting to understand our connection and starting to figure it out. I do wanna, I, I, I wonder, I really wonder if there would be a resolution here. So actually we're gonna jump right into the advice um, because I do, I was gonna use this deck called Angel Answers and just get some advice from the angels. But I think I'll ask a direct question to the angels Okay, for love and light, the highest truth and clarity of this relationship, will there be a resolution? Like where both parties in this connection know exactly what, where, where things are at and where things are going. Will there be a resolution to whatever issue is being dealt with here? Angels. Okay. We have within the next few weeks, you will have a resolution. So be patient, y'all, be patient. And you are ready. For some reason, you need to hear that. I don't know what this is referring to, but the angels are saying, you're ready. You're ready to take this next step, is what I feel like saying. You're ready to do this thing you've been thinking about for some of you. Hmm. Any other general advice, angels? 
the situation will improve. Things will get better between you two. Um, we're seeing more light kind of going out of this kind of dark and murky confusion and into the light, understanding um, what needs to happen in this connection, where things are going, and really just getting on the same page with each other, which is really great. I, I love to see this, okay? I love it for you. Now, this is a deck called the Rebel Deck. It's very sassy, I'm warning you now. Um, <laughs> what advice? Uh, do, does your spirit guides this deck, whoever, <laughs> um, in love and light, what advice do they have for you when it comes to this situation or towards your life in general? Okay, you have two cards. The first one says rebel because eff it. <laughs> okay. And then the second one says stop effing whining. I do think that chronic complaining or focusing too much on the bad might um, be kind of hurting this relationship. So if you've been doing that, maybe that's something you should pay attention to. It says no one wants to listen to that. <laughs> I'm trying to filter so I don't get demonetized. Complaining makes you weak. You have strength to change your world, so do it, you know? And with these two cards together, it's almost giving me like, you have the strength, the power to resolve these issues, to make a solution, to kind of make your life better right now. And I kind of see that in the nine of pentacles reversed as well. Like you have everything in your power to make your life more fulfilling and happy right now. You just need to do it. So that's what that's saying. And I feel like the angel saying you're ready is also kind of, the, the energy here is like, you have more power than you realize, you know? So, and also, I, I see the spirit guides um, giving you permission to take bolder actions in this connection. If you ever feel guided to make any bold actions, this is your go ahead, this is your green light. So, asking the romance angels for advice now. Okay. Anything else? We have three cards on the table. Four cards now. <laughs> going twice, going three times. Okay. We have playfulness. I totally, this resonates completely. Like to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Being positive, having fun, it is really needed in this connection. I, I really do feel like I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, <laughs> please don't be mad at me. But like, if you've been kind of focusing on the issues in this connection, the incompatibilities, um, the problems a lot, like I feel like that really, um, drained a lot of love, drained a lot of energy out of your relationship. Think of a relationship as like a cup, right? And every time you have a difficult conversation or you complain about something or a problem comes up, it's like you're taking liquid out of that cup. And in order to refill that cup of love, you need to be in this playful energy with your person. You need to have fun, go on a nice date night, be intimate, you know? It, like that's really required. And and you already know exactly what I'm talking about. Like if you get into an argument, um, like even over the phone or something, and then you're not there presently physically to hug, to make up, to, you know, make love or whatever, um, it can really kind of create like a permanent drain on that relationship until you can refill it. You know, you get what I'm saying? So I, I really do feel like it's important for you to recapture romance here and to be more playful, more lighthearted, more patient, and more in the present moment. We also have keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual types and expectations. Keep an open mind about how to resolve this issue, I want to say as well. Keep an open mind about how you can keep each other in each other's lives while still getting both of your needs met. Um, I, I always laugh when I see this card because it says keep an open mind and then the artwork on it literally looks like a three way is about to happen. <laughs> so I mean like, I don't know. Um, that's not necessarily predicting that's what's gonna solve this relationship. That never solves a problem. <laughs> but it is saying like, you know, be more open-minded. You don't have to do things the set way. And this is something that you may be like subconsciously afflicted by. Like society has been showing us like the set ways of how to have relationships. And subconsciously we try to like manifest that in our relationships. But this is saying like your relationship is so unique to you and you can form it in any way that works for both of you. 
and this idea that you necess that you like need to break up with someone if you have an incompatibility um i i simply don't believe in that like i really don't unless there's a ton of like really bad incompatibilities but it's like you don't have to completely write someone out of your life just because they don't meet 100 of your needs and i don't think you're ever going to find someone to meet 100 of your needs that's why you'll never hear me using phrases like the one you found the one because first off there's a lot of soulmates in your life and like i just don't i don't resonate with that like i really when i go and visit spirit and you know get and like talk to spirits it's like all of your loves that you've loved in life exists in spirit simultaneously time does not exist so like your version of heaven or whatever your higher self is surrounded by everyone you've loved in this reality past present and future like there's no one person like i you know i just mm, i don't really know where i'm going with this tangent but it's ba i'm basically just trying to say like you don't necessarily need to cut someone out of your life entirely because of a little incompatibility. Um, do something that will help you both get all of your needs and wants met, whether through the relationship or through other means that are not the relationship. You know what I'm saying? So whatever that is for you, you can, you can resolve it. <laughs> all right. We have reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life. I'm seeing this as a reconciliation after this issue, after dealing with this incompatibility, like not really knowing where things are going. Maybe you just had an argument or something and we're reconciling and we're returning back to love in this connection is what I'm seeing here. And we have, it is safe for you to love. I don't know how many times your spirit guides have said this in your reading, like, Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Whenever this card comes out for me in a reading about a particular person, it's kind of like your spirit guide's way of saying like, this person is safe for you to love. It's safe for you to open your heart up to them. And it comes, it's really a healing card for anyone with trust issues. It's saying like, no, trust us, your spirit guides, that they are trustworthy. And you had all of these cards saying how trustworthy they are. So, I mean... That is that. Thank you. All. Oh wait, no, we got one more. Got one more message. Okay, almost forgot. Mama Moon, my favorite spirit guide. All right, she rules over relationships, emotions, and your daily routines. Mm. <laughs> you couldn't have asked for a better card to come out. Oh my god, I'm literally blushing. The card that came out for you from Mama Moon is the full moon in Libra. A win-win outcome is forecast and the whole entire reading we were talking about just focusing on this issue needing to make a mature decision that's fulfilling for the both of us this idea that like there's a huge issue here and you need to meet in the middle and find a compromise that will work for the both of you and then the last card in this reading from mama moon who rules over relationships is saying a win win or outcome is forecast so being able to heal this connection and resolve this issue is definitely being predicted here and i'm gonna read you this full message from the book just because i'm so excited about it it says the full moon in libra the sign of partnership falling in love and of closely relating to someone else since full moons are about climaxes and conclusions, this card suggests you're either about to start a new relationship or that an important existing relationship is changing somehow, perhaps coming to an end or moving to a new level of commitment. I really genuinely don't know which one it is for you guys. It might be different for all of you, but like in the next few weeks, I would definitely say that there is a final conclusion coming up for you. Like if you're dating someone, you're either gonna decide that you should stop dating or you're gonna like go to a whole nother level. If you're long distance, this will be like, we're either ending it or we're moving in. Like a really concrete decision where both people can move on happily is going to be made. So I'm getting good energy from it. So I feel like it's something, like, like we said, it's something you're both gonna be happy with. So, or like you're both gonna be like, yes, this feels right for us. It, that's what's happening for you. So it's, it's good either way. Um, blah, 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 blah. It's important to remember that people come to us for a reason and sometimes just for a season. If a relationship is ending now, it's doing so at the right time. So try not to fight it. 
This card can also refer to a professional relationship. There is a sense that you need to balance your ego with someone else's needs. Mmm. A win-win outcome is possible with give and take. Doing so might be the answer to your question. Let go of that which is falling away. Some additional meanings of this card. See the other person through the eyes of love. It will change your perspective. I think that's really important for you guys right now. Like, I feel like because of this issue, you might have been a little bit pessimistic. And this is saying, like, try to see this person through the eyes of love and empathy and kind of work with them. Um, they have a need. And I, I just feel like when you let pessimism get in the way, it can create a lot of ego here. And a lot of ego can create this sense of like needing to get your way entirely. And if you're needing to be getting your entire way, <laughs> like needing your entire, like the way that you want things, if you need that like 100%, you're not really giving room for compromise to happen. And if you're not giving room for compromise to happen, then this might not work out, okay? Um, I mean, it's perfectly okay for you to not want to compromise on big things in your life, and that's totally fine. I'm not saying, you know, whatever. It's time for you to make a firm decision, okay? And we saw that in Lovers too. It's time for a decision here. It is time for a decision. And that's what, that's what the angel said too. You're ready to make a decision about this. So go ahead. Like if you already have an idea of what you want to do or a decision you want to make here, go ahead and do it. That's what this is saying. Um, time for you to focus on yourself for a while. We saw that in the nine of pentacles as well. Look after yourself, but avoid vanity. Now is a great time for a makeover. So just in case you wanted to do that. <laughs> no matter when you pull the full moon and Libra card, it encourages you to find balance between your desires and those of the people around you. Balance is very Libra in energy and the full moon brings things to a peak. Dramas and upsets bring partnerships to the fore. Libra energy also brings love energy and negotiations are easier. So it's a good time to negotiate. If you're watching this, by the way, the time that I'm posting it, which is on the full moon Scorpio eclipse, okay, powerful, powerful time. If you're watching this that weekend, so that would be May, May 5th to the 7th, I fully believe that the 6th and 7th, so Saturday and Sunday, are really powerful times for negotiation in this year, okay? So whatever this issue, so this is specifically only for the people watching at the time that I'm posting it, okay? So if that it does not apply to you, you can click off, thank you for joining me, like, share, comment, subscribe, whatever. Okay, now if you're watching this, when I'm posting this, this relationship issue has come to a head with this eclipse and you are getting really clear-minded insights into this connection right now. And your emotions will probably be at a peak this Friday, the day that I'm posting this, which is why I'm saying like, and, and full moons are all about letting go, releasing what is no longer serving. And I feel like this issue that you've been going back and forth on, that's something you need to release. And so that's why I think that on the 6th and the 7th, it's gonna be a great time for emotional discussion and negotiation so you can step out of this phase of this connection. Whatever that looks like for you, whether you're breaking up or whether you're coming to an agreement, compromising, I just feel like it's a really good weekend for getting on the same page, negotiating and kind of bringing the peace and the playfulness back into a connection while finding a solution that works for both people, whether that's separating or being together. So <sighs> thank you guys for joining me. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for the next reading. Bye-bye.